in uh, doing some preparation for this talk, I uh, ran across an article by a priest, a uh, former professor at Catholic University for, quite, for many years, at the University of Washington, Father Joseph Kamanchak, who has done a lot of work on Vatican Council. And uh, to mark the 40th anniversary of the Council, 10 years ago, I wrote an uh, article in America Magazine. And I thought uh, his uh, opening paragraph was uh, had a kind of an abiding value. He said uh, that he met a, an Irish-born uh, uh, nun who had a, was teaching a class of high school age uh, uh, students and was uh, remarking uh, on aspects of Vatican II. And um, even more than usual, she saw this glazed look on the face of her students. And so uh, she thought, I wonder if I need to ask this, but I will ask it. She said, uh, who can tell me uh, what Vatican II was? Silence. Looks, looking down at the floor. Finally, one young lady timidly put up her hand and said, uh, would that be the Pope's summer address? <laughs> uh, summer address. Summer address. Summer residence. The address of the summer residence. Uh, so it uh, occurs to me that uh, maybe, uh, well, some people are of a certain age here, probably remember the Vatican Council uh, when it was in the news. Others would, may not uh, have as clear an idea of the context of it. So I want to do a little bit of contextualizing that I hope will be useful either to recall uh, the uh, council or to um, be uh, inform you. Um, in the year 2000, uh, many of us will recall that uh, the then uh, Holy Father, Blessed Pope John Paul II, led the Church in preparing to celebrate the 2000th anniversary of the birth of Jesus Christ. And he, he encouraged all of us, bishops and priests and everybody, to look at uh, the uh, coming uh, at the celebration of that Jubilee year and uh, to prepare our Ourselves, our hearts, our minds, and spirits, so that we could uh, participate in the beginnings of the new millennium, the third millennium of Christianity. And uh, among the things that he remarked in his uh, the beautiful testament he, he gave after celebrating so many of the events of that year was uh, this remark about the Second Vatican Council in his, uh, uh, his apostolic letter, entering the new millennium. He said, the documents of the Second Vatican Council have lost nothing of their brilliance. They need to be read correctly, to be widely known, and taken to heart as important and normative texts of the magisterium, that is the church's teaching authority, at the church's tradition, I feel more than ever in duty bound, Pope John Paul said, to point to the council as the great grace bestowed on the church in the 20th century. There we find a sure compass by which to take our bearings in the century now beginning. I think those uh, words uh, of that uh, wonderful holy man uh, guided the church for so many years, I think those words um, are perhaps the most uh, eloquent testament to the, uh, to the uh, spirit and the letter of the council itself. Uh, the spirit, the Holy Spirit that moved the bishops of the entire world at that time, 1962 to 1965, to get together and to discern the signs of the times, what was needed for the church, and how best to 
I present the message of the gospel that Jesus asked or ordered his first apostles to go out into the whole world and to preach as good news. And so with this great grace, it seems to me, as it has certainly seemed to our present Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, is uh, something that uh, on its 50th anniversary, as Archbishop Niederauer indicated, just celebrated on the 11th of October, two months ago, uh, this uh, grace is something that we that calls us to reflect back on what the Council taught, taught us and how well we have lived up to those teachings and what we have yet to do in, term, in, in terms of implementing them as fully as possible. We recall the great developments that marked the 20th century and that prepared the way for the uh, Second Vatican Council, I want to remind us of those, uh, the biblical renewal that took place. Uh, it, it was commonplace for Catholics to be crit criticized for not reading the Bible. And uh, the decades, uh, the early part of the 20th century saw a genuine renewal in biblical scholarship and in the uh, in the invitation for people to take up their Bibles and to pray them, to read them, to meditate them, and therefore, through the Word of God, the inspired Word of God, the revealed Word of God, come to know Jesus Christ and the message that He brought to the world. Uh, the liturgical movement, the first of the major constitutions, one of the first documents that the Vatican Council, the bishops at Vatican Council adopted, was the Constitution on Divine Liturgy. And it was the fruit of uh, decades of uh, liturgical research, proposals for uh, guaranteeing, helping uh, to improve the active participation of the Catholic faithful in the various liturgical rites, particularly at the Mass. And then um, we think of the um, uh, patristic renewal, it's called the renewal in interest and in understanding and uh, research in the fathers of the church, those great saints and doctors of the church of the first several centuries, so close to the time of Christ himself, who left a legacy which uh, the council went back. Uh, Discovered, re proposed, and it was uh, a part of the, of the uh, uh, work that the Second Vatican Council called the Church to recognize so that it would be uh, solid in its uh, link to the tradition that comes from the time of Christ Himself. Uh, and then the last aspect that I think is worth uh, recalling in these great movements that were already taking place uh, in the, uh, particularly in the Christian world, is the ecumenical movement, which started among the missionaries and the challenge of the missionaries to be teaching about Jesus Christ, but uh, from different church traditions, and people would say, well, how is it possible? Uh, this is, is this the same Jesus Christ, or isn't it? So that began a reflection that uh, that uh, the prayer of Jesus at the Last Supper, that all may be one, needed to be uh, a focal point for all the Christian churches. And that ecumenical movement was uh, something to which the Second Vatican Council invited us Catholics to take seriously and uh, we will say that these last uh, 50 years have been a time of a remarkable uh, increase in the ecumenical spirit. Among Christians. Pope John XXIII, who was uh, newly elected as Pope in, uh, in 1958, shortly, just a few months after his election, on January 25th, 1959, described the purpose uh, and the uh, work of a new council he was proposing that the church celebrated just three short 